but so Iqbal was telling us that that the Bible is corrupted and whatnot. Uh, that that's why we don't find Muhammad into in it, and you know all kinds of things along those lines. Uh, was, actually, was actually, here? Sorry, 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 he actually wasn't um, saying that's why we don't find Muhammad. I, I want to correct. Oh, okay, that. he was saying he was just going total to quote fallacy saying that the Bible is corrupted when we were saying that, that uh, there's no evidence for Mecca. He was just saying that the Bible contains contradictions. The Bible contains errors. And I asked him uh, if the, if that's the case, why was your God so stupid that he <laughs> affirmed the, uh, the gospel, you know, he, and he told Christians to judge by, well, first I, I said that he affirmed the gospel mm -hmm. and then he came back with something along the lines that uh, he was only affirming that the the original gospel or whatever, and then I said, "Well, why does your God tell the Christians of the seventh century that they have no ground to stand upon unless they judge by the gospel that is with them, mm -hmm. uh, literally between their hands?" In the Arabic idiom, and he said, "Reasoned." That's because they were concealing the revelation, which was revealed to Moses. So the Christians in the seventh century still had the original gospel, which was given to Moses, and they were simply hiding it. And Allah knew this, and that is why he affirmed the correct original gospel given to Moses. Where where does it say where does it say that? Where in the where in the entire Quran does it say that there's no correction that is being given to the scripture there are corrections given to the people of the book but there is no such thing as a correction about the scripture the scripture itself is affirmed over and over and over again as Allah's perfectly preserved words why are we even looking for Muhammad in our scriptures if your scripture didn't say that we could find him in our scriptures during the time of the seventh century, and clearly he has no recollection, or maybe he didn't watch, or maybe he didn't pay attention to the very first video. I laid this out so that we wouldn't have these stupid discussions, but we're going to have these stupid discussions because we love our Muslim friends and we want them to listen and come to the truth of the matter. It says in Surah 7, 157, the unlettered prophet whom they which is the people of the book, find written with them by Nayadehi in between their hands with them of Muhammad. We can find Muhammad in our scriptures of that particular day. This is proof that the author of the Quran knew that the scriptures that the Christians and the Jews, the people of the book, had in their hands had Muhammad written about in description. And some commentators even say by name. We have hundreds, if not thousands, of scriptures predating Muhammad, complete Bibles predating Muhammad that exactly match the Bibles that we have today with no variant or error in them whatsoever. And not a single one of them mentions anything about your illiterate prophet, false prophet, not a single one. And we're going through it step by step. So your Allah, if he's all-knowing, thinks that he can just point us to this Bible. He thinks he can point the Muslims to the Bible to confirm that what who Muhammad is and the religion that they have is built upon the Torah and the Injil and the Zabur that they have in between their hands. But if he knew that it was corrupted, then he's malicious because he's trying to mislead you into going on a wild goose chase to find something which he knows isn't there. Do you want to worship a malicious and a deceptive God? Is that what you want to do? Is that who you want to worship? I hope not. Or on the flip side, he could have said it. Allah could have said it and been like, I'm sure I was sure. I was sure that it was there, but golly darn it. You know, Allah darn it. It's not in there. Holy cow. I guess I was just ignorant. Or he, he was unable and he was impotent to preserve his incorruptible speech, which is the Injil and the Torah and the Zabur, that he points you Muslims to to find your fake prophet written about. So explain to me how we can ever, how you can stand on any of those grounds. Oh, the Bible is corrupted. That's the dumbest thing that you can possibly say. 
And I'm sorry for getting heated about it, but it, it is literally the dumbest thing you can possibly say. It does not go well for you if you say that. But please go ahead and continue to say it so I can continue to go on these rants and expose the absurdities that the Muslims have to hold to in their cognitive dissonance to remain in their false religion. Absolutely. So we have a request from Dragon to read Surah 1094. So I have that ready to go here. Let me and my screen share, move the other one. If you, the translator has to add O Prophet because the perfectly clear word of Allah doesn't tell us who is being spoken to, are in doubt about that which we have revealed to you, then ask those who read the scriptures before you. The truth has certainly come to you from your Lord, so do not be one of those who doubts. So we're going to go with Iqbal's theory here that the uh, the Christians of the 7th century, also the Jews of the 7th century, still have the original gospel and Torah both given to Moses, and they're just concealing those. So then Muhammad has doubts about his revelation, or at least in theory might have doubts. And this all-knowing God tells the tells Muhammad that he can get confirmation from these groups which are intentionally hiding the scripture. Do you think that that's good advice given to your prophet? Well, what do you think, A.T.? If, if, it, if it was good advice given to the prophet, uh, it, it would have been. It would have been if, <laughs> if, our, if our scriptures told of him. It really would have been if our scriptures confirmed him. And furthermore, if the Quran completely is, is aligned with the previous revelations of Allah, but it doesn't. So no matter which way you slice it, the Quran is wrong. That's, I, I just don't understand how Muslims can't wrap their brain around this. It's insane. And, and what, what, what kind of deity has to be responding to naysayers of his prophet? Well, they say this and they say that. So you, you're okay. You're a real, you're a true prophet. All you have to do is do this. They say you're just telling tales of the ancients. This was written down eternally on an eternal tablet. Allah quabbling and quarreling with 7th century Arabs uh, for eternity past and eternity future in this in this incorruptible, indestructible, eternal book. Like how how ridiculous is that? That's that's absurd beyond absurd. I don't even know how else to 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 describe that. It's like <laughs> the more proof that the Quran is clearly made by uh, Muhammad. That's all I can say. So um, Marion asked, hiding from whom and why, and that's a good question. Now, why would they be hiding these scriptures in, say, the 5th century when mm -hmm. they had no idea who Muhammad was? You know, you could maybe say after Muhammad came, they didn't want to accept him, so they hid it. But why would they be hiding it before he even came? This is, uh, this is what you have to assume. You, you have to assume that all Christians and all Jews everywhere everywhere where the scripture was throughout the entire Roman empire, throughout the diaspora, throughout wherever the scriptures were by the 600s. You have to assume that every single one of those communities, right? Thousands upon thousands of communities had their Bible and by some power unbeknownst to us, they decided that, you know what? We don't know about this coming prophet. It's clear to us that there is a coming prophet, but we're pretty comfortable with where we are. All of them, not one of them, not two of them, not most of them, literally all of them to the Muslim imagination had to decide to conceal that particular person coming at, at once. And there's not a trace, not a single trace out of the 10,000 ancient manuscripts, not, not a trace or a hint of some Ara Arabian prophet coming, not a name Ahmed or any of these ridiculous claims, not a single trace, but the Muslim mind has to, in cognitive dissonance, they have to go, that's what happened. That's, I, I, I keep using the word absurd. That's the most absurd thing you can think of. That's, uh, that's absurdity on top of absurdity. So Iqbal has a response here. 
he says 691 and 515. So I'm assuming that he's telling us to look up those Quran verses. So let's go ahead and do that. Speech. I, I have a feeling I know which verses the they are. But... Speech. And they have not shown Allah his proper reverence when they said Allah has revealed nothing to any human being. Say, who then revealed the book brought forth by Moses as a light and guidance to people, which you split into separate sheets, revealing some and hiding much? You have been taught that neither you nor your forefathers knew. Say, Allah, <laughs> the translator had to add revealed it. I've been mean, skipping over what the translator adds, but that's hilarious that they added Allah revealed it when it really just says Allah then leave them to amuse themselves with falsehood. So what this passage says is that people took the writings that were given to Moses and they hid some of them and they revealed some of them. Um, how is this consistent with your claim? Is hiding, uh, hold on, is hiding the same thing as destroying Thaddeus? No, I mean, he, uh, Iqbal said that the, the scriptures had been hidden, at least. Okay. He's being consistent on, on that. Okay. Um, so if I hide but, something, does that mean it's, it doesn't exist? It's not there? Like, I don't, I don't. No, it means it still exists. It should be able to be found. And so and, all of these scriptures that exist all the way throughout the world, all of them simultaneously hid the exact same thing and have not revealed it yet. Is that what you're suggesting, Iqbal? Yeah, I guess. I mean, uh, I do have another comment from him that, that I'll get to in a second. I do want to bring up the other verse that he quoted first. But even if he's going to assert that, you know, the Christians continue to hide it to this day, that we have it available somewhere, what about all the Christians who converted to Islam? And what about all the Jews that converted to Islam? Why didn't they bring their copy of this secret scripture? Because mm. presumably they knew about the secret scripture. They wouldn't have converted to Islam in the first place. Uh, since, you know, the Islam claims that it exists, they, they must have known about it. So why did they not reveal it after they had converted? Mysteries that we'll never have an answer to, I guess. Yeah. And 5.15. O people of the book, now our messenger has come to you, revealing much of which you have hidden in the scripture and disregarding much. There certainly has come to you from Allah a light and clear book. So again, saying that it's hidden, not that it's been destroyed, not that it's been corrupted, not that it doesn't exist. And then it says that Muhammad disregarded much, that, that he decided to get rid of a lot of what the scripture legitimately <laughs> said that hadn't been hidden. Uh, uh -oh. This is the passage you go to to appeal to Muhammad uh -oh. being a true prophet, is that he's contradicting the revelation of Allah. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I wonder if he's going to ever take this seriously. Do you think he will? Yeah, probably not, unfortunately. Okay. But hopefully uh, some of the long... listeners here are. Yes. And then his great response here was, Howard, the responsibility of the preservation of the Thoro, whatever that is, was given to their elders, but they played with the revelation of God. You know, what is the evidence of this? And why are we a coward? And, you know, we're about to open this stream up. We have a few more slides to get to, but we'll open it up. You can come talk to us live. I have a feeling you're not going to, but, you know, feel free to prove me wrong and prove that you are not a coward and are willing to talk to us. But let's I just go of his theory that some elders uh, were supposed to preserve the Thora and they failed to do so. So Scriptura would like to know, are the elders more powerful than Allah? Exactly. And I would like to know this, the answer to that. And, well. and again, guys, like I'm, I'm glad that we're responding to this, right? Because we laid this out in the very beginning. The, these, these are the fallback arguments. So when they start to fall back, it makes a lot either um, evil, uh, ignorant, or impotent, right? So you, you just hail, you just nailed it on the head with the impotence. A law is apparently too weak to preserve his scriptures, or he doesn't want to, which makes him evil and malicious. So you can you can choose that, or he was ignorant altogether. You can choose one of those three Muslims. You literally can't choose anything else. I, I, I pray that you seriously think about this. 
write it down, do a, do a journal entry, dear journal, today I'm going to figure out how a law is not impotent, ignorant, or malicious. I want to figure that out and then write it down, figure out if you, if, if you can logically work that problem out and then let me know. Cause if you do, I'll be very impressed. And, uh, Iqbal gave us one more verse and I had to bring this one up. We have revealed to you this book with the truth as a confirmation of supreme of previous scriptures and a supreme authority over them. So you're telling us that your Quran confirms the previous scriptures. If it confirms them, then how is it authority over them? This, this sentence contradicts itself. If it's saying the same thing, how is it authority over them? Either it's saying the same thing or it's not saying the same thing. So, so do let us know what Allah actually meant in his perfectly clear word there that contradicts itself within the same sentence. Mm -hmm. But this is exactly what we were telling you, that it confirms the previous books, that it has the same information as them. Yeah. And uh, go go figure that out. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, Miriam. Uh, I, I was thinking Thora is Thor's twin sister that we just haven't heard about. Uh, that'll probably be in the, you know, there's Lady Hulk. There will also be Lady Thor. Her name will be Thora for the next Marvel movie. And just two more quick comments that, that we don't necessarily have to comment on. Uh, John Preacher says, these Muslims are not even true Muslims, according to the Quran. Real Muslims must believe in all God's books. Mm -hmm. These Abduls reject God's books. C4, yep. 136. And that's one of the five five pillars, right? Is, or five, there's six. I can't remember what it is, but it's one of the pillars of faith is believing in, you know, one God, yes. believing in, in past revelations, all of them. And just to prove John's point here, O oh, believers, so that's supposedly the Muslims, have faith in Allah, his messenger, the book he has revealed to his messenger. That's where the Muslim will stop reading. <laughs> and then it says, and the scriptures he revealed before them. Mm -hmm. So the Muslim, in order to be called a believer, is required to have faith in Allah, required to have faith in the messenger, required to have faith in the Quran, and required to have faith in the scriptures that were revealed yes. before. Yes. So, so they have to have faith that Allah is malicious, that he corrupted him himself, that Allah is impotent, that they were corrupted, or that um, he was ignorant, that that he didn't actually know it was in the scriptures. That's that, Those are the only three. I'm repeating it, but those are the only three options that Muslims have. You can have faith in that. I have, I have faith that your God has no idea what he's talking about. Indeed, whoever denies Allah, his angels, his books, plural, mm -hmm. his messengers, and the last day has clearly gone far astray. Iqbal, mm. your God says you've gone far astray by denying the authority of the Torah and the gospel. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, being far astray. And then uh, I, there was a super chat that I wanted to read as well from Phil 210. If Revelation was not concealed, then Muhammad would be able to read it. It is in Hebrew and Aramaic. He couldn't read Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. uh, we'll just let that one stand. That's good. Good one, buddy. Yeah, thank you very much for the super chat. Much appreciated there. Uh, taking up uh, enough on this aside, but Iqbal, if you have further theories that, that will amaze us, do feel free to put those in the chat and we'll open it up for live discussion soon. We'd love to have you come up and join mm -hmm. us. For sure. But for now, we'll go back to the presentation.